Shad by Hashem, Kokakadash, double honors to the elders and apostles of the great millstone, wishing his word truthfully and sincerely. Shout out to the Akim, scattered through the four corners of the globe, wishing the word truthfully and sincerely. And shout out to the Akim, that be like unto the speckled bird, preaching the word truthfully and sincerely. And I say shout out to you, Akim, out there. And this is the book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 8, in the Holy Scriptures, and it reads, for nation shall rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be uh, earthquakes in diverse places and there shall be famines and troubles these are the beginning of sorrows and yeah so with that since i brought that scripture out i was going to bring out some articles to back that uh scripture up and uh this is uh, one article right here because you've been having you know, continuing ongoing conflict between both both two sides, you know. Because, you, you know, you got the Houthi rebels, which is an Iranian-backed uh, military group, you know, going against the uh, Yemen forces, you know, Yemen government, army forces, you know. And then that goes into the nations rising up against one another, you know, different, different nations of, uh, in these, uh, you know, in these different countries and stuff like that, you know. And this is a news article from AirNews.com. Uh, this was published, I say, uh, about October twenty first, twenty twenty two, from AirNews.com. And the highlight of this news article, and it reads: It says Yemen government forces intercept Houthi drones attacking s s southern oil terminal. And this is a photo right here. It says uh, Yemen pro-government fighters. Uh, main a position during a fight with the Iranian backed Houthi militant group. It says uh, Yemen government officials said Houthi drones attack Al Dabar oil terminal. And it says uh, Yemen International uh, recognized the government that said on Friday its forces has intercepted armed drones launched on a southern oil terminal in Parman province by Houthi militants as an oil tanker was prepared to dock. And it says a Yemen government official said the Houthi drones attacked the Al Dabar oil terminal lock in the southern town of Al Shura and Nasser's oil tanker was preparing to enter the terminal. And you know, they have uh, discussions with this previously, you know, about uh, you know, the Iranian backed forces keep on intercepting like certain parts in that region, especially like the southern part of Yemen. You know, you have like uh, oils, oil port uh, businesses like importing and exporting back in that area. And you know, the Houthi uh, rebels was the Iranian backed group. You know, they keep on like interfering in that area over there. And then along with the uh, clashes on the other side, you know, you know, they look at this as the uh, enemy and stuff like that. As you still have continuing, uh, you know, uh, Yemen forces uh, going against those uh, Iranian Bakuchi rebel military groups in that region over there. You know, they've been trying to have like trust agreements to, you know, they've been having on and off discussions about it, like uh, a one month or two month uh, uh, ceasefire, uh, something like that. But it seemed like it hadn't worked out but previously had worked, but I think like they tried to extend it back in early uh, June or June or July or something like that, for instance. So you know you see, you know the, when that First Thessalonians uh, five and three comes into mind, uh, when they shall say uh, peace and safety, then sudden storms will come upon them. You know that's just uh, added a note to that scripture. You know that came that comes into mind. You know what these nations having like. Uh, you know, ceasefire agreements between one another, but the conflicts, you know, like proxy wars, commotions of wars between the nations of different kingdoms and something like that, quite some while now, because you know, you got the Yemen uh, forces. Uh, Yemen is uh, backed by uh, Saudi Arabia as well, too. You know, in a while back, they've been having like ongoing conflict between uh, since 2015 and all the way into now. So, you know, you're still gonna have uh, on and off uh, situations between both sides, you know. So that's why they constantly, consistently come with these uh, ceasefire agreements, these uh, trust agreements on both sides. 
you know, during, because, you know, uh, the Houthi rebels, the Houthi uh, Iranian-backed rebels, because they an ally with uh, Iran, you know, tried to uh, disrupt uh, import and export of uh, oil productions, you know, of any other sorts as well, too. So, you know, hey, that's that uh, nations rising against nations, you know, on a constant, consistently basis. And that's what we're going to continue to, uh, like, see. And this is uh, continuing on working with the news article. It says a Yemen government official said the Houthi drones attacked the Al Shabar oil terminal located in the southern town of Al Shabar as NASA oil tanker was prepared to enter the terminal. NASA was scheduled to load 2 million barrels of crud from the terminal. He said officials said, adding that there was no damage to the port. The uh, in the tanker uh, officials uh, from our government's Makpa Bin Mahdi, if I pronounced that right, conforming to the attacks of rules. And it says the incident is the first major escalation since the Iranian backed Houthi militants and Yemen government fails to renew. Right, because I, yeah, I just mentioned that. Yeah, they tried to, to extend it about like an uh, extra two months, but they failed to uh, get some type of trust agreement between both sides. And I'm going to read it again for edification's sake. It says the incident is the first major escalation since the Iranian backed Houthi militants and the Yemen government fails to renew a UN broker trust early this month, amending differences of overpayment of salaries for uh, civil uh, servants in Houthi's control areas. And it says the U.S. Energy Information Administration, the IEA, uh, estimated Yemen has uh, proven over oil reserve of 3 million barrels. And it says the United Kingdom Maritime Trade Operations, the UK MTO, said it was aware of uh, the reports of an incident of the mixing of Al Shar and the Vast and the crew are safe. And then that's our the KEA uh, oil tanker was uh, moving within zones on Friday outside of Al Arbat, the Gulf of Eden. If I pronounce that right, a re-offensive data shows the UN special uh, envy has Ron Berg said he will continue to push for a extend, extending and expanding deal between the warring parties, both uh, and it says uh, both and under intense international pressure to come to an agreement. And it says uh, the trust has largely su succeeded in stopping the violence across Yemen as uh, well as the alongs uh, some fuel ships into or Dara, or Dara, if I pronounce that right, port in some uh, commercial flights from San Boat held by Houthis. Yeah. So yeah, gonna have uh, non-stop continue uh, increase over there in that region. You know, the Iranian backed Houthi rebel militant groups versus the Yemen forces as they continue to uh, di disrupt like ports and goods and uh, oil productions in that uh, region over there. You know, as the violence uh, start to increase, escalate back once again after the uh, last month, as I was reading on to the article, you know, they try to have like certain uh, negotiations type, you know, try to de-escalate the situation between both sides. You know, because that's when that first Thessalonians 5 3 comes in. But when they shall say peace and safety, then something's worse to go on. You know, and that's a prime example. You're going to see that increase more and more and more. With the first Thessalonians, uh, when it, you know, the first Thessalonians that I just brought up as a reference, you know, you're gonna have some more PC safety type spirits, you know, between the different nations, you know, because the war is gonna increase between the uh, two different nations as well, too, around the globe. And that's another news article that I, uh, and it's a, uh, another news article that I wanted to bring out as well, too. I had a few of them. I had uh, saved on my uh, phone uh, before leaving out. Uh, 
right, let's see. And this is another one in regards to the, you know, current tensions between uh, uh, Russia and Ukraine. And you know this goes, this goes, uh, I believe, like a week or two ago. Within like you know a week or two ago, I would say like uh, basically like two and a half weeks ago, close to two and a half weeks ago, you had uh, uh, with that incident when uh, Russia had launched those missiles uh, over there in uh, at Ukraine, soldiers. After that uh, bridge collapse, I say about like two and a half weeks ago, like I mentioned before, you know, amending those tensions on with that. And you know, and this this comes after, uh, I believe, Vladimir Putin and the uh, president of Belarus, because you know, they both allies, both countries as allies with one another. You know, they made that announcement of the deployment of the troops and stuff like that. And now you got this right here, like two weeks later, uh, this is a news article from RT.com, and this was published on October 21st, 2022, from uh, RTNews.com, alternative news around the world. And this reads, uh, Ukrainian military sends video warning to Belarus. KV, right, because you got uh, continuing uh, escalations over there in KV, over there in the region of Ukraine, different parts over there in Ukraine after... Uh, Vladimir Putin was able to have a vote to have like those certain areas in Ukraine. Now it's owned by uh, now it's and now it's named by Russia in those territories. You know, so now you still got the ongoing uh, tensions between Russia and Ukraine. And um, that's it right here. I'm from reading. I'm reading again for edification's sake for this lesson. And it says the Ukraine military sends video warning to Belarus. Kavi said it will strike targets on its neighboring territory if Miss joins the Russian op operation. And this is an aerial photo. It says a Ukrainian soldier takes position in a trench. Shari, we'll call that I pronounced that right. And it says the, uh, the Ukraine military has warned Belarus in a video address that it will retaliate against any strikes coming from its neighboring country, amending growing concerns in Kavi that uh, Russia, uh, Russia may launch in another offense. And it says, it's locking left this portrayal pass. It says the four minute clip which was uploaded on Facebook page on the Ukraine Armed Forces on Friday, which is today, started with a reminder of the long standing friendship and good and good neighboring uh, relations between Kaviv and Miss. However, it concluded with a warning. However, it included with a warning of retaliation in the event of Belarus taking part in a military operation that Russia has been carrying out in Ukraine. According to the video, the Belarus authorities have been preparing to do just that and have already started in secretly recruiting troops for the mission. It says, if the army of Belarus supports the Russian aggression, we will respond as harshly as we will respond to all occupants of the territory of Ukraine with the use of the whole arsenal of weapons the uh, Ukraine military warns. The retaliation is what including striking military officials on the territory of your country, he added, addressing the Valerian's people. The video message was was recorded in Russia, urging all of the citizens of Belarus not to follow the orders of your leadership by joining the war against Ukraine. And it says on Thursday, 
the Ukrainian Armed Forces General Staff claimed that the threat of the Russian Armed Forces resuming their offense on the Northern Front has been growing. It says Russia already advanced on the Ukrainian capital of Kavi from the Valyrian territory in late February when the conflict has just started. All the way into now. It says, however, this time the focus of Russian offense could be switched towards the western part of Ukraine, Valyrian's border. Any attempts to cut delivery routes and foreign weapons to the government. Vladimir Lezinsky, uh, the general staff, suggests that Russian troops uh, began arriving in Valyria last week in the order becoming a part of joint defense uh, force recently announced by the mosque and miss the Valyrian's authorities said that they are I mean that they had agreed to host the Russian soldiers on their territory due to the increasing aggressions from the Kyiv and Western nations. It says it is planned that Russia will deploy 9,000 troops and some 170 tanks are up to 100 artillery pieces to Valerius Valery Breskov in the aid to the Valerian's military minister announced on Monday. He said that nothing about the possibility of the uh, joint, joint groups taking part in the offense and against Ukraine, right? Because that's like a rumor of war. As you have, because uh, in the latter days, you're going to have an uh, increase of these uh, wars and rumors of wars on a uh, constantly consistent daily basis, you know. As I read this again, another title and introduction that I just read just now uh, and bringing out the news article as well, too. So yeah, Ukraine military sending a video warning to Belarus if they fully um, join, you know, Russia's uh, military, you know, because you already got the uh, ongoing conflict between, you know, the two nations, you know, after the invasion of uh, Ukraine, which Russia still look at as that a, a military operation in Ukraine, you know, from late February all the way to now, you know. Because those tensions are still increasingly escalating. And then uh, we had another news article. It was about like the day before yesterday, you know, uh, I don't know if it's true or not. Uh, they had like, I, I think uh, Iran, Iran had uh, deployed in some troops to train the Ukraine soldiers over there for those drone strikes uh, that had happened like uh, the day before yesterday. So, you know, United States, they was keeping, United States and the Biden administration, they was keep on, uh, keeping on trail on that monitoring and that situation, you know. So, you know, each side's blaming one another, you know, that, you know, uh, Iran is, is the cause and the, Iran and Russia is to blame for using the uh, drones on the, uh, you know, using drones on the, uh, Ukrainian soldiers in that region over there, you know. Now, potentially, if it's true or not, now, currently at the moment, you have a uh, deployment of Ukraine, I mean, uh, Iranian uh, soldiers training uh, Ukrainian soldiers to use uh, the Iranian drones, you know, to help them in the uh, special operation mis mission that's currently going on in Ukraine, you know. So they might get potentially involved in that as well too. So that's why you got the increasing of build up of the uh, wars and rumors of wars and the nations rising up against one another. So, you know, this is this definitely just gonna further escalate uh, more and more and more, you know. Um, and this is another news article as well too. Um, This is from the Jerusalem Post. I had found this as well, too, from October 20th, 2022. I say this is about uh, the day before yesterday. And uh, this is from the Jerusalem Post. And this is published by October 20th of 2022 and last updated on October 20th, 2022. 
and this is by Reuters, and this is from the published, and this is on from the Jerusalem Post. And the highlight of this news article, and it reads, Iran warns Saudi Arabia over reliance on Israel Guard Commander. And it says, Iran on Thursday said the leaders of regional foes, Saudi Arabia, should end what they call their reliance on Israel. According to the um, semi-official uh, Tanzim, if I pronounce that right, news agency reports, it says, in a appearance reference, the growing ties between Israel and the Gulf Arab states. Because I remember like uh, a couple of months ago or early in this year, they had both sides. I believe the uh, prime minister of uh, Israel, you know, they met with a, a certain uh, uh, Arabian leaders to have some type of, uh, you know, coalition with one another, you know, because I remember that, you know, a few months back. But continuing on with the reading, it says, uh, we are relying on Israel, which is collapsing. And this will be the end of your era. Hassan Salami, the top commander of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, was quoted as saying in what he called a warning to the kingdom's ruling, Al Shadar family. It says the Saudi Arabia has signaled its backing for the so called Abraham Accords. It says, under which the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain are for gold relations with uh, Israel two years ago. But Radad of Saudi Arabia has stopped short of former recognizing neighboring Israel. And it says, uh, it says Israel has voiced willingness to work militarily with the new Gulf partners, which have been more publicly resented about such a prospect. So, yeah, you know, I just wanted to add that in there as well, too. So, we'll have had a, had a way that will play out. But uh, I think it was another news article that I had as well, too, I believe. I think that's about it but and then i'll bring out some scriptures so yeah these uh these things are definitely occurring on the planet earth this is the book of uh luke this is the book of luke chapter 21 verse 9 but when ye share here of laws and promotions be not terrified for these things must first come and pass but the end is not by end by right because the end is not yet right because we're seeing these uh prophecies unfolding on an everyday basis you know we're seeing things taking place on the planet earth on an everyday basis you know like i mentioned before the proxy wars the endless wars between the nations and different kingdoms and stuff like that it's increasing as you see those news articles that i'm running out with uh Valerius uh, getting warnings from uh, uh, Valerius getting uh, warnings. You know that if they, uh, you know, Valerius, the country of Valerius, and the president and their soldiers, you know, because like I mentioned before, Valerius and uh, uh, Russia they allies with one another. You know. Uh, According to the uh, reports, as I was bringing out that news article, that Ukraine sent a warning to uh, Valerius. I believe it's like a three or four minute video, you know, stating that, you know, sending that warning to Valerius. Hey, if, you know, Ukraine sent that warning to them, like, hey, if you, um, Valerius join this war in Russia Ukraine, which is currently going on right now, because the tension's increasing and the war escalating. It's a Christian as well too. Hey, you know they sent that warning. They say, hey, we're gonna retaliate us. We're gonna retaliate against y'all that's joining Russia in this uh, war that we are fighting right now. You know, so that's those wars and rumors of wars is heating up and it's gonna continue to build up as well too. 
that's why you've been seeing these increasings of uh, these nations of these uh, military exercise drills, military training exercise drills, joint navy vessel type drills, simulation type war game type drills, simulation attacks on their enemies, you know, different nations against one another, you know, and that preparedness uh, for war, you know. As that news article that I brought out day before yesterday, I did a sit down lesson on uh, about, you know, China is uh, gearing up preparing for war of what Taiwan of a potential invasion of uh, uh, the South China Sea, a uh, potential of, uh, invasion of uh, Taiwan, you know, because you got the uh, ongoing continued escalations, even though it kind of slowed down a little bit from the past couple of months that it, it was heating up, you know, hey, China is now ready more, that ready uh, war preparedness, you know, it's going to have the uh, tensions continues to escalate between Beijing and Washington, China against the United States, you know, China against the United States and Taiwan, you know, because Taiwan still want to be a sovereign country as they separated from uh, uh, China, the mainland in 1949, you know, so you're still going to have that ongoing tensions increasing. And then over there in the seas, in the island seas over there uh, with the Philippines over the island dispute, and I believe in the Indo-Pacific uh, area over there. You know, not too long ago, you had Indonesia and those different armies had a little exercise drills. I say about uh, close to like a month and a half ago. So all these different signs of, uh, that's the reason why the end is not yet, because all these signs just keep on increasing and building up, you know, between the two different nations and two different kingdoms. Because you're gonna have many different type of wars of uh, nations escalating uh, that are uh, against one another. This can be an economic war, uh, wars of uh, who should uh, claim this land, claim this oil, fighting over oil, uh, fighting over economic wars. So it can be many different types of things for it be a full all-out escalation of wars. You know, that's why it's come, that's why I brought out the scripture of uh, Luke 21 and 9, the increase of uh, commotions of wars, proxy wars, wars, and rumors of wars, you know, because this is a continuing uh, heating up, a build up, slowly but surely of the uh, nations are rising up against one another and they're getting closer to that ww3 which is a uh, uh revelations 11 and 14 of a uh, reference that scripture the second world was passed behold the third world coming quickly so we see continuing increasing signs of it and it's going to furthermore escalate that's why the scripture said because the end is not yet right because you got the motb uh which is that digital currency which is coming that karate Rotten seasons coming up. We seeing signs of it on an everyday basis as we read through these news articles and stuff like that. We do sit down lessons on this, you know. So the the MOTB right along with the uh, WW3, you know, they all gonna come in line together, you know. But first, that MOTB uh, have to comes out first, you know. As the elder uh, elder Malcolm always mentioned. And the elder, beloved elder, Pastor Har as well, too. You know, he's saying that, uh, MO, before all these, uh, wars continues to increase and escalate, that MOTB have to come out first. You know, that digital currency, you know, the outer temptation mode, you know. Either you down with this, uh, Esau Eden system, or you down with the Heavenly Father, or the only God's Son, you know, because that's the outer temptation comes in, you know. And in Revelation uh, 14, uh, through 19, I mean, for Revelations uh, reference scripture in regards to the hour temptation that uh, Revelations 14 and 9 through verse 10. Hey, if you take that uh, MOTB, hey, that's that uh, word judgment. You're going to be in burning through the lake of fire, you know. Especially the Israelites that, that take that. They see him, you know, you know what, you know. But, you know, that's that's for another topic at hand. But, you know, hey, these uh, wars and rumors of wars increasing. And uh, nations are rising up against these different nations, you know, in many different type of levels, you know, economic war, agenda war, territorial war, you know, and many other uh, type of wars as well, too, is in increasing. You know, the proxy wars, endless wars, commotions of wars, rumors of wars building up and heating up to that uh, WW3, you know, because we're seeing signs and uh, preparations of it. And uh, it's going to increase more and more and more.
So with that, um, you know, I just wanted to do a little sit down outside, walk and talk lesson before we start camp very soon. So with that, I hope this uh, lesson was edifying for In The News on October 21st, 2022 on this uh, Friday afternoon, 12.57 uh, p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. So with that, I would like to give all praises and glory and honor to to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shaf Bashem, Wakar Kadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, which was word truthfully and sincerely. Shout out to the Occupants Gap the Four Corners of the Globe, which was word truthfully and sincerely. And shout out to the Occupants Gap the Four Corners of the Globe, which was word truthfully and sincerely. And shout out to the Occupants that be like unto the speckled bird. Christian word, truthfully and sincerely. And until next time, I would say uh, Shalom and a ball, ball, ball.